Well, welcome back to another week of worship here at St. John. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. If you're joining us online for the first time, my name is uh, Dave Larson. I'm the pastor here at St. John, and it's a joy to have you with us as we hear God's Word, sing His praises, and lift up our prayers to Him today. Uh, once again, as we say each week, uh, if you have not yet done so, we invite you to do a couple things before we get into our worship today. So again, we invite you to grab a PDF of the bulletin. You can find that on the website, stjohnwoodbury.org. Uh, and that way you can follow along with the service, participate, sing along with the hymns. And again, you can find that, like I said, on the website. Likewise, I invite you to grab a PDF of the What's Happening. Again, that can also be found on the website. And that has information coming up uh, about stuff coming up here at St. John, but also has the paragraph overview for the service today, as well as the sermon outline if you want to take notes or track along with the message today. Uh, today we do continue our fall sermon series called Restart. In fact, we're down to our last two sermons in this series. And today we're going to be looking at the topic of reconnect. And you can find on the PDF of your What's Happening, our central point of the week, which says God created us to be in community with others. So for Christians, it's absolutely vital to gather together. As we do so, we are reminded of our unity in the gospel, and we testify to the world the transformational power of the cross. And so again, today we'll be focusing, and you'll see this throughout the service, uh, in uh, the hymns, especially in the sermon, uh, on the power and uh, the calling of Christian community. So we begin our worship service today as we sing together our opening hymn, O Day of Rest and Gladness. Spirit, Son, 
the church her voice upraises to the blessed three in one. On this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues with our readings from Scripture. The Old Testament reading for today is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, or wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when they have children, there is nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry in their hands. This too is a grievous evil. As everyone comes, so they depart. And what do they gain, since they toil for the wind? All their days they eat in darkness, with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I have observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the, day, during the few days of life God has given them. For this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 1 through 16. The author of Hebrews writes, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now, we who have believed enter the rest. Just as God has said, so I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, And since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did 
when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firm to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for today is according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark writes, Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue as we sing together our hymn of the day, Jesus, Thy Blood and Righteousness. Thou hast 
just for all our ransom paid for all a full atonement made when from the dust of death i rise to claim my mansion in the skies this then shall be Jesus hath lived and died for me. Jesus, be endless praise to thee, whose boundless mercy hath for me, for me and all thy hands have made an everlasting Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allow us to gather together to have Christian community in this way on this day, uh, that you allow us in this digital form uh, to connect with you and to connect with each other in spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the church. And Lord, as we take a look at the topic of community, of relationships, of fellowship with each other, uh, this community that we have in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts will be pleasing in your sight. O oh, Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. So as I mentioned before, today we are continuing our fall sermon series called Restart. In fact, again, we are down to our final two messages in this series. And as I've mentioned with each one of these sermons, the uh, overarching goal uh, for this series is for all of us in various ways to jumpstart, to restart our faith lives, our, our spiritual lives. And the lens that we've been looking through uh, to look at these different topics in this series has been Acts chapter 2, the end of Acts 2, where we have uh, the summary statement of what life was like in the early church. And not only are we looking through the lens of these verses to, again, understand these topics, but also we, we look at this summary statement of what life was like in the early church and use it as a target for us as individuals, as families, as a faith community on how we are called to live as God's people. And so today we're going to focus on uh, selected words, uh, selected verses, excuse me, from Acts chapter 2, and especially looking at these verses. It says, they, that is, the early church, devoted themselves to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And so again, the focus for today is on Christian community. It's on the church. It's on fellowship, on Christian relationships, and how we live those out in this world. Now, again, if you've been tracking along with this series, you'll know that uh, each week I've been asking you to uh, just kind of think through how these last 18 months have affected you in various areas. Now, I've asked you to look at uh, how these past 18 months have affected you in your overall health, but especially your spiritual health, uh, how it's affected your ability to have hope for the future, how it's affected your generosity, how it's affected evangelism, Bible study. And today, as we move forward with this series, I want you to contemplate on another area. And this is an area that I'm willing to bet, for all of us, has been very negatively impacted by the pandemic. And this is that area, again, of community, relationships, connectedness with other people. And so again, I want you to think about this. As you look back at the last 18 months, as you look at life in this pandemic, how has it affected your connectedness with other people in your life? With family members, friends, neighbors, coworkers? But how has it also affected your connectedness with the church? 
How has it connected you, or, or excuse me, impacted your relationships with your brothers and sisters in Christ, with, with fellow Christians? Especially, how has it impacted your connectedness with your faith family here at St. John? I'm not going to lie to you. This, of all the topics we've looked at, I would say this is one where I am most concerned. Because the pandemic, by its nature, has created a huge amount of disconnect in every part of our lives. You see, the way God designed the church, he designed the church to be a place of fellowship, a place of connectedness. He designed the church to be in relationship with one another, that we are the church, and we are called to be connected to our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we live, and I've mentioned this before, and again, it's nothing you don't already know, but we live in a very individualistic, very isolated culture, and the pandemic has only exacerbated that issue. It's only made things even worse. But again, in contrast to that, God calls upon us as his people to be connected with each other to be in relationship with each other, to be in relationship with our brothers and sisters of Christ. The, the Christian church cannot be lived out in an isolated way. The, the, the Christian life cannot be carried out alone, disconnected from the larger church. And, and the reality is when people try to do that, very negative things happen. I love this quote. This actually just happened to pop up uh, in my readings this week, but this is again from one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis. And he writes this in one of his books. He says, It was one of the Wesleys, I think, who said that the New Testament knows nothing of solitary religion. We are forbidden to neglect the assembling of ourselves together. The church is the bride of Christ, we are members of one another. As we look at this topic of Christian fellowship, Christian community, Christian relationships, the foundation for all this is found in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, the creation account. And when we look at the creation account, we find that as God creates everything, as he speaks everything into existence, all along the way he says, it's good. As he makes the sun, the moon, the stars, he said, it's good. As he makes the plants, the land, the animals, he says, it's good. When he makes humans, he says, it's good. But at some point during the creative process, God looked at his creation and realized something wasn't good, that, that something was missing. In fact, we find in Genesis 2, verse 18, it says, The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. See, so again, God looked at his creation and he says, everything is good except man is alone. He is isolated. He has no community. He has no relationships. He has no connectedness. And so the solution? God created Eve. God brought Eve to Adam. And as God now looks at his creation, he sees holistic perfection. Because he, he sees in Adam and Eve that they have a perfect community with each other. They have a perfect community with God, perfect relationships with the rest of creation, even perfect relationships with themselves. And again, he says, this is how it's supposed to be. This is perfect. This is very good. But I'm willing to bet you kind of know what comes next. That almost immediately after this, sin enters the world. Adam and Eve fell into temptation. They disobeyed God. And all of a sudden, sin and death have come into the world, invaded the world to disrupt that perfection, to disrupt that paradise, to disrupt that connectedness. But even in this moment of the fall, of brokenness, of pain and suffering and eventual death, God promises that one day, he will restore all that was lost because of sin. He says that one day, that perfect community, that perfect relationships, that holistic perfection that existed in Eden would one day be restored. In fact, we have in Genesis 3, verse 15, 
these words from God, and this is often referred to as the Proto-Evangelion. In other words, the first gospel. Because here God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Again, he's speaking to the serpent here where he says, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. As we track along with the rest of Scripture, starting the Old Testament, we see God making a people for himself, gathering people together, his chosen people. And through them, we are seeing glimpses of a restored community. And also through them, we see a moving forward of the story towards restoration. And the story of restored community, restored paradise, all of it finds its fulfillment when we come to the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect life. He was in perfect relationship with others, in perfect relationship with God, in perfect relationship with creation, in perfect relationship with himself. He lived a life that we could not live, but he then went to the cross to die the death that we should have died, only to rise triumphantly from the grave three days later. So when we look at the gospel, we look at the personal work of Jesus Christ, in him we see restoration. We, we see perfection brought back into this fallen and broken world. We see an undoing in Jesus Christ of what happened when sin came into the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. You see, all of this is why it's so incredibly important, so incredibly vital for us as Christians, for the people of God to be in relationship with each other, to have connectedness with one another, to have Christian community. Because you see, every time that we gather with our brothers and sisters, every time we connect, every time we have relationship with our faith family, we experience the gospel. Every single time when we gather together in some way, shape, or form, we experience in a tangible way the restoration that Jesus won for us on the cross. Every time we gather together, we experience in a brief way what Jesus won for us in the undoing of what sin took away in the fall. See, when we gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we experience that even though we still live in this fallen world, even though we still experience brokenness and death, when we have Christian community, we experience the restoration of perfection that Jesus won for us. And again, this is what the Apostle Paul writes on this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. He says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is being joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his Spirit. But not only this, but whenever we have Christian community, when we have fellowship, connectedness with each other, not only do we enjoy the reality of the restoration that Jesus won for us, but also we are reminded of the perfect restoration that we will experience one day when we live in God's paradise, in heaven, in the new heavens, the new earth, the new creation with God himself. That each time that we connect with a fellow believer, we have a small glimpse of what perfect community will look like for all eternity. And we get a glimpse of this in Scripture in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. It says, Then I, that is John, was writing this, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, 
for the old order of things has passed away. But on top of all of this, not only do we get to experience a tangible reality of the gospel every time we connect with the church, and not only do we get a foretaste of our eternal future, our perfect future, every time we gather with our brothers and sisters, but through this relationship, through this Christian community, we bear witness to the world about how Jesus has restored us to each other, how he has restored us to him, that through our gathering together, we bear witness to the gospel to the world, that the world would see again through us, through our community, a tangible reality of the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, I love this passage. It's from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. And I know I quote this passage quite often. But Peter writes this. He says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. There's a great quote. Uh, it's from a really good book on Christian community and fellowship uh, by an author named Brad House. And he writes this about our connectedness becoming our witness to the world. He says, this is the purpose of community. We have been saved so that we would express the gospel of Jesus Christ. Living together in community, reconciled and united by the cross, is a physical demonstration of the grace of God. You know, one of my favorite uh, books that, that I've ever read, I've read it a few times, uh, it's a book uh, called Life Together uh, by uh, the old German pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And he has a, an amazing quote in here that, again, it's one of those where now having lived through the pandemic, going through this pandemic, takes on a whole new light about the grace, the beauty, the incredible nature of connectedness, relationship, community, with our fellow believers. He writes this. He says, It is easily forgotten that the fellowship of Christian brethren is a gift of grace, a gift of the kingdom of God that any day may be taken from us, that the time that still separates us from utter loneliness may be brief indeed. Let him thank God on his knees and declare, It is grace, nothing but grace, that we are allowed to live in community with Christian brethren. And again, I would argue that over the last year and a half, we've seen how true this is. How quickly things can change where we're not able to meet together with our brothers and sisters in Christ the way that we used to. But even beyond the pandemic, I've seen so many people, as you get older in years, all of a sudden one day you're healthy, the next day you find yourself in the hospital or worse health uh, stuck at home or in a care facility. And life changes. And all of a sudden, that Christian community that maybe we used to take for granted, we don't have access to it anymore in the way that we used to. And see, that's why my prayer for us, my hope, my desire for all of us is that we would love the church. We would love Christian community, the, the fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That we would have a deep desire for it because we would know that any time we connect with our faith family it is a tangible reality, a tangible expression of the restoration that Jesus has won for us. And it's also a tangible witness to the world of the gospel of what Jesus has done for us through his life, death, and resurrection. And I pray that each and every time that we connect with our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether it's in corporate worship or if it's in small groups, if it's one-on-one -on -one with people, but whatever form it takes, I pray that each time we would treasure that. It would be filled with joy and peace and gladness because we don't know when we'll get to gather together with them again. That each time we experience this, we would experience it 
with joy and humility and thankfulness and praise that each time that we connect with our brothers and sisters, we would look forward to that. That we would never take it for granted. But that we would desire this. We would desire connectedness because we know the incredible nature of Christian community. And here's my promise to you and to all of us. Is that for us here at St. John, we will do everything we can to continue to foster connectedness, Christian community, fellowship, whether it's through in-person worship or online worship, Bible studies, homebound visits, one-on-one visits, fellowship events. And one of the things that we're going to be introducing here, and an email is going to be going out later this week, is we're going to be launching a new small group ministry called Gospel Communities that will focus on the three F's, food, fellowship, faith. And if you want to get connected to one of those, whether in person or digitally, we'll make it happen. Because then God has saved us through the life, death, and resurrection. And as he has saved us, he has connected us to our brothers and sisters in Christ. He has brought us into fellowship with him and with each other. And I want to close with these words from the Apostle John. In 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, these are the words that John shares with us. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. May God grant you overflowing, unending joy through your fellowship with God and your fellowship with the church through Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of the church, for the community of believers, the community of saints. Lord, I ask that we would never take this connection to this community for granted but that we would see in it and through it the gospel. So Lord, allow us to yearn for Christian community, to desire it, for us to rejoice every time we experience it, and allow our community, our gathering, to be a tangible witness to the world of the good news of Jesus Christ, who through his life, death, and resurrection has restored us, brought about restoration and wholeness and healing and freedom from sin, and from death. We pray all this and more in your name, Jesus. Amen. At this time, we respond to God's word by affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to say this creed along with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, our worship continues as we recite together our verse of the month. So again, I invite you to say these words with me, and hopefully as we go through these words uh, throughout the month, uh, that you are uh, taking them to heart, internalizing these words, and memorizing them. And so again, our verse for the month of October is Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. We say it together. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We continue this time with a gathering of our offerings. As we say each week, there's a couple of ways to support the ministry here at St. John. So you can uh, 
uh, support uh, the ministry online and uh, provide your offerings online by going to the website, stjohnwoodbury.org. The far right tab is the Give tab, and you can follow those instructions. Or you can mail your offerings to the church office, and we do collect that mail each and every day. So again, we thank you uh, for your faithfulness to the gospel and the, your faithfulness uh, to supporting uh, the community that, that God has gathered together here at St. John Lutheran in Woodbury. Our worship service continues with our congregational prayers. Uh, as we say each week, you can find the full names of those mentioned in the prayer list uh, on the PDF of your What's Happening. We do want to make note of a couple of folks today. We're going to pray uh, for the family and friends of Judy DeBruzzi, uh, the friend of Cindy Melzer. Uh, Judy passed away this week, so we're going to keep, uh, again, the family and friends in our prayers today. But we also want to thank God for the answers uh, to prayers for Renee Holtz, uh, who uh, has spent a year uh, after a transplant, and uh, she's doing great. Uh, and so we thank God for answered prayer and for healing for Renee. We pray. Most high and holy God, we humbly ask you to accept these, your own gifts, that we offer to you. And here we would present and yield ourselves to you, asking you to make us true members, incorporated in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that in communion with your whole church, we may make a pure offering to your name. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Bless, we pray, you, our schools, hospitals, homes for the aged, and all our institutions. Bless those who minister to human need, whether of body, mind, or spirit, and grant them wisdom, strength, and love for you and all people. Let your blessing rest upon the seed time and harvest, commerce and industry, leisure and rest, and the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose toil is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their effort toward any useful task. Give to all people the mind of Christ and order our days in righteousness. Take from us all hatred and prejudice and whatever may hinder justice and love among people everywhere. O oh Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Remember the nations of the world and let concord and peace prevail among them. Remember those who rule over us and guide those who influence our lives through the media. Remember our children, our youth, the married couples, and those living single lives, the widows and orphans, and all those who are dealing with disappointments in life. Remember the sick, the suffering, and the persecuted and dying. From our midst, Lord, we pray for the family and friends of Judy DeBruzzi. We also pray for Dale, Pastor Vic and Joanne, Joe, Ginger, Dave, Roger, Susan, Nancy, Jane, Carla, Mike, Carlos, Nancy, Breck, Ben, Aaron, Sam, Dorothy, Clara, Bartley, Renee, Joanne, Kevin, Mary, Peter, Olene, Dolores, Doug, Betsy, Marion, Jean, and those that we lay before you, Lord, in our hearts and minds at this time. Lord God, send them help from your sanctuary, and by your Spirit, strengthen them according to your gracious will. O oh Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Finally, O oh Lord, we pray for ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we might show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Grant that we who now celebrate this blessed feast at your altar may, at the close of this present age, be clothed with white robes of those who shall join the marriage supper of the Lamb eternally. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our worship service continues at this time with our blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor 
and grant you his peace. Amen. We pray together our send-off prayer. Knowing that the time is drawing near, may I, by your Spirit's prompting, support the mission and ministry of my church with my personal witness, my earnest prayers, and my sacrificial gifts. Grant that through me, many may be saved from the kingdom of darkness for the kingdom of your light. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues as we sing together our closing hymn, Abide, O Dearest Jesus. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us uh, in this way. And uh, as we say each week, well, we do pray it was a source of joy and peace and blessing for you. Uh, as always, we want to thank those who make uh, these online services uh, available. Uh, so we uh, thank Mary Jo for leading the, the music today. Big thank you to uh, Crystal, uh, as always, behind the camera, the editing, uploading, uh, to make sure that uh, these online services can take place. So uh, today, uh, again, a couple of quick announcements before we close our time together. Uh, we do invite you, again, if you're watching this live um, on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, uh, to hop over, join us online if you'd like for our uh, Bible study uh, that Pastor Stadler is leading. So again, in your What's Happening, you can find the link to that. Uh, this week they'll be looking at uh, 1 Kings 17, Elijah and the widow as Zarephath. Also, uh, if you would like to get to know more about St. John, perhaps you've been uh, kind of just checking us out and want to get to know about who we are, uh, get connected in some way. We are having our next Get to Know St. John event uh, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on October 30th. And again, you can find uh, the information there on how to join us via Zoom if you'd like to join us that way or in person. Uh, also, we're still looking for a few more uh, confirmation mentors that we'd like to uh, connect with our confirmation students uh, to pray for them and encourage them throughout the confirmation process. So again, you can find more details about all these things in your What's Happening. So again, we hope you have a wonderful day, a blessed rest of your week. We close our time together with the Lord's dismissal. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.